Good. So welcome, everyone. My name is Don Carter, and welcome to a RFSA chat, which is Riverside Food Systems Alliance. And uh, this is a series that we're doing called Local Food System Pioneers. And I'm so pleased to have with me as our guest today, Seth Wilson. And Seth, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks, Don. <laughs> and one of the things um, I wanted to do is to basically the purpose of these videos and the series of videos is to encourage people to um, join a local food systems alliance if you have one in your own community, but also too, to kind of get the word out about what's going on in Riverside um, as we all encourage each other to contribute to making food systems happen you know, for all of the different reasons that we all have. So Seth, how long have you been involved? First of all, for those who are watching this, What's a food system alliance? What is that? That's kind of a weird phrase. Yeah, it, it is. And um, uh, throughout the U.S., you, you either hear food systems alliances or food policy councils. Oh, okay. um, and they're they're almost interchangeable. Um, but but I, I think what what we see with um, a food system alliance is not just a focus on developing good policy around um, the local food system um, and health and, and uh, healthy food, um, but really a, um, a, an active involvement um, outside of just policy to make the local food system work. Um, access to direct access to local foods um, uh, helping to develop um, uh, and uh, uh, support local uh, farmers markets and also to um, look for strategies that improve access of healthy food for all citizens in the community, regardless um, of income levels um, or, um, or, or social status. We, we have a, a lot of challenges in, in our communities mm -hmm. Um, with um, uh, disadvantaged communities. And when you see that, you also see high incidences of diabetes and um, heart um, disease. And, and um, uh, just because a lot of times we don't have the budgets um, on uh, you know, a $3 a day um, uh, uh, budget, let, let's say, to eat healthy food. So how can we provide strategies that not only improve the economic development of our communities, but bring local healthy food to those communities as well. And we're hopeful that in that process, we can even create jobs through the food system um, that, um, th that improves access um, and improves the well-being of, um, uh, of all people in our community. So you're, what, it, what you're talking about is very far reaching. It sounds like we've got different people that are involved because of the health benefits of, of eating locally sourced produce. We've got growers who are trying to find markets for what it is that they're growing. Right. We've got local foodies or we've got, you know, people who are, are um, wanting to feed their families in a more healthy way. Um, so you've got those on the end, the end side of that. But it also sounds like you've got, um, civic and business organizations who have an interest in it making sure that everyone is eating eating healthily. Oh. Um, I think I just lost sound. Hold on. Oh, okay. So there are a lot. So, yeah. so yeah, you okay, can just ahead. drop the headset off and went. Um, the computer mic. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you want to have one headset have because that. you hear me talking. Um, okay, the well, let's I try and um, re Bluetooth. Okay, give me one second. Okay, no okay. problem. No problem. problem. Yeah. yeah. All the joys All of the technology. Joys of technology. <laughs> yeah, the, the headphones are kind of. I can still hear that. I can okay, still hear. we're yeah, back. There on. we go. Great. So maybe Bluetooth is that problematic, but it sounds like basically food systems are not just about farmers, and it's not just about you know the the uh, government, you know the civic government, you know the entities that are are you know interested. It's really about everyone because food touches everyone. 
um, with yes. us. And, and I guess my background has been really in energy. And um, w within the energy um, industry, there we have always recognized uh, this relationship between water and energy. And I think as I started to delve into the food system, I also found really it's this uh, three-way nexus between food, water, and energy. Oh. And so um, what we find is with a local food system, um, there's less transportation to get food into uh, where your market is, and that reduces the energy. Oh, so you're talking about even just transporting the food to places. You're so you can That's reduce right. That's that, right. your carbon footprint by not sh picking it locally, shipping it 60 miles away, and then having it shipped back. So you're saying the energy that's even wasted. That's right. Okay. That's right. Inefficient. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and exactly. And and of course, how much water is contained in food? Mm. Quite a bit. Um, tomatoes, for example. Um, and the more water that's in um, something, um, the heavier it is, and the more energy it takes to move it. And, and so um, you, you're, you know, and a lot of times you're, you're moving water. Um, sometimes um, when, when you're importing food, you're actually importing water in, in a variety of dimensions. Um, so these variety of connections from energy, water, food, and then our society, and then we see our economy trying to, um, uh, when you buy local, you're, you're keeping your dollars in local community. So food really interacts on so many fronts. So that so talk to us a little bit about the buy local and eat local. Why could a, why would that matter in some real practical ways to just say an, an average consumer? You know, what would be the benefits? I mean, you've mentioned one at a broad sense of, you know, it reduces the carbon footprint mm -hmm. of the transport of the of the material of the food. But what about just a just, you know, Joe regular on the street? Why would buying local matter to them? You know, it, if you were to take on it and um, take it to, let, let's say, a big box um, store mm -hmm. um, where you're buying um, a, a product and probably those products uh, and it could be a let's say it's a um, a fast food or a, a, a restaurant that really uh, uses you know large um, uh, food dis distributors that dollar when you pay to the store owner then gets sent to their food distributor and that food distributor um, might have a local office, um, but then it's transferred out to their national office, which might be mm -hmm. in um, Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And so the amount of time that that dollar stays in the community um, is a very short time. Now, let's say you walk down to your local farmer's market and you buy um, uh, uh, some food for our vegetables grown by a um, local farmer yeah that local farmer then um you know he, he's staying local he uh goes out and he buys let, let's say um uh materials for his farm or um uh or hire, he someone. Buys, hire someone or hire somebody exactly and uh then uh so he's giving that dollar that you just marked to somebody else local and then that person may buy uh, something else locally and so that dollar turns in the community three five you know uh, maybe more times um so it's the more hands that it touches local the more um individuals in the community that are benefited from that dollar I see. and what we see is that a community that has a high amount of local um business activity where these dollars are, are, are turned more in their community, they're able to have more jobs in their community. They're they're buying and um, th they really have a more vibrant um, uh, economy. So, um, speaking of the local economy, and welcome, Francis. It's good to see you in here. Um, 
Michael Schumann, who's the author who wrote the book, um, is it uh, the name of his book? Local Dollars, Local Sense. Yes. Oh my yes. gosh. So yes. with Grow Riverside, which is what we're gearing up for, I know this is backwards for you guys, but Grow Riverside, we are gearing up for this conference and it's in two weeks. There we go. Oh, hold that up. I'm going to get a picture. Hold that up straight. Right here. Hold it up straight up. So okay. I'm trying to get Francis, if you're near, I'm going to go ahead and hold it down just a tiny bit lower, lower, lower. Perfect. Okay, screenshot of that. Okay. Um, Francis, if you're anywhere, okay. if you're anywhere okay. near a, um, a computer with a, a camera, you're more and you have headphones. You're more than welcome to hop in as well. What were you going to say, Seth? Well, I've got this um, already autographed. Oh my word! I got to get a capture. Yes. That's I'm so jealous. Wow. Yes. I, well, hey, he is going to be signing books um, at the um, e event on March 21st. So uh, be sure to get a book and ask him to sign it. When I was working in um, Chicago and I knew I was going to, I'd been commuting back and forth for about seven years and I was um, about to, um, to leave my job in Chicago and head home, um, I had an opportunity to um, hear him speak and do a, a day-long workshop in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Nice. Um, and again, similar to Riverside, that community brought him in um, and asked him to talk about how important and what are some strategies um, of um, building the local economy, buying local, investing local. Um, and um, I, I, what we're seeing is really a strong local movement. You, you see um, uh, the uh, uh, Bally Group, the, the Be a Localist um, uh, uh, organization, uh, which has been a strong proponent. Um, matter of fact, Michael Schumann has developed a number of economic models for them um, to, to help show how strong communities can be when they do lean more on local economies. Wow. So I'm, what a what a treasure then that Riverside has invited him to be one of the speakers at Grow Riverside, because I think that the whole movement is growing. It's not just, you know, we're seeing pockets of it, but I think especially in this day and age with technology that can connect pockets of activists or people that we can cross pollinate and learn from one another. So people that, you know, as we are pulling together our Food Systems Alliance here, you know, or, or focusing on local, we can learn from other cities or area communities that have um, seen the benefit of coalescing all those very stakeholders. That's that's a great point. And Riverside, uh, the Food Systems Alliance, we're actually part of a, a state um, group of organizations um, related to the California uh, Food Policy Council. And we have a number of, um, uh, of food policy councils throughout Southern California, um, San Diego, Ooh. Northern San Diego, Orange County, um, Los Angeles, uh, Santa Barbara, um, uh, San Bernardino. And uh, periodically uh, we will uh, get together. And I think we're actually uh, a number of the executive directors and um, active um, uh, members of these organizations will be at the uh, Grow Riverside uh, conference on March 21st. Oh, that's wonderful. So it really is about, um, and welcome, Samantha. I'm glad you jumped in here. So we've got a guest from Ireland, Seth. Um, what we're talking about oh, is wonderful. how we are working together to build what's called a Food Systems Alliance. And it really is talking about getting locally sourced produce and buying locally to help build the economy within wherever the community is that we are, keeping the dollars local or the pounds, wherever you are from. Um, but it's also about making good, healthy food that's farm fresh picked available to consumers uh, without all the transport, without adding to the carbon footprint of transporting. Not only is it it's it's uh, econo um, uh, ecologically sound, but it's also um, nutritionally better for you when you buy things that are quicker. So just popped in to say hi. Thank you so much. I'm I, We should get Garrett in here. Samantha is who we should get because we're talking about cross collaborating but between silos. I mean, that's what an alliance is, you know, getting those conversations that need to happen between the, you know, finding out what are the pain points of each of the stakeholders and then working together to solve that. Yeah, you, you know, what, what uh, a statistic I found really fascinating um, is if you compare 
Los Angeles and the population and the amount of land area, the the density, yeah, um, compared to Cuba, huh. um, they're about the same in terms of population, population oh, density, yeah. and in Cuba, ninety percent of their food is sourced locally, and in Los Angeles or in our Southern California less than 2%. Mm -hmm. So imagine, we're just starting to open relations with um, with uh, Cuba, but imagine walking into that country um, that is uh, feeding themselves within the urban setting that, that they have. Imagine the number of gardens um, uh, and open spaces that, that are in their community and what that might look like and how if we were to transform Southern California into every vacant lot as being a um, uh, basically a corner um, uh, uh, farm, uh, uh, <laughs> community garden or uh, what have you, yeah. um, how transformative th um, that place space w would become um, uh, within your community. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that being an island has something to do with it too. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, they do have ships in and out. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you can ship food, but, and I'm sure the economic embargoes mm -hmm. that um, uh, the U S has had on uh, Cuba and mm -hmm. um, the, the limitations that they've had to right. fend for themselves. But there are a number of um, uh, communities throughout South America, throughout Asia, um, high populations, but also, um, uh, high urban food um, source um, communities. Wow. So that I love the idea. A, I mean, I went two years ago, I went to the first Grow Riverside Conference, which was that first convening of um, a lot of conversations that had happened around community gardens. A lot of the folks that we, we affectionately refer to as the choir, they're the folks within our community that have been putting in those hard hours, making connections with people and, and advocating um, out of the goodness of their heart. Um, and I, I appreciate the leadership that the city has had, as well as a lot of these local um, you know, ag leaders and health leaders that have seen the value of, you know what, we need more community gardens. How can we help that happen? We need better locally sourced produce. How can we make that happen? And we need to you know combat and make sure that it's available for all, whether you are you know, you have the income to go shop at an organic store or you are uh, in a more economically disadvantaged area. Um, so, Seth, tell us a little bit about some of the R RUSD, the school oh, district. I think I just lost you again on um, sound. Can okay. you hear me? I can hear you fine. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I can hear you um, fine. Let me see. Uh, give me one minute. Okay. So, so, no, no, I hear, no, no. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. I think every time I get some kind of email ding, mm -hmm. it knocks my um, Bluetooth off or, or what have you. So, uh, apologies. What was your uh, question? I was just going to, I was just asking about um, Riverside and Farm to School. Can you just talk to me? I know that Riverside has done some really you know, interesting things with the Riverside Unified School District and um, the commitment that they've had to, um, I, I just, it's a really fascinating concept to me about being able to provide that kind of food all across the socioeconomic uh, landscape here within the city. So yes. what what is yes. RUSD done? Well, uh, I, I think um, their previous, um, uh, kitchen um, uh, leader or the, the manager of um, the, their food operations. Um, he, he moved in, I believe, le from Santa Monica and operated our, our, our food, our, our school system uh, food program for a number of years and really focused on purchasing local. I think what he left just last fall but um, uh, we, uh, the Riverside Unified School District um, is purchasing about $1 million of local food a, a year. And um, th they're, they actually have the capacity to purchase more. Now, to kind of put that in perspective, I just saw a report of 
uh, the entire San Diego, um, all school systems, um, is about a $4 million local purchase. Um, uh, so uh, communities are seeing the importance, but the fact that you know, RUSD is one fourth of the entire San, San Diego County uh, uh, speaks volumes as to how committed uh, the, the school was and, and through his, his leadership, and that leadership really is uh, uh, continuing um, with, with, uh, with staff. And I think what they recognize is it's so important for our kids to get, um, have every advantage they can when they show up at school and um, uh, take tests and uh, learn and participate. And my wife's a sixth grade school teacher. And, oh, and so, really you know, for, for them to, you know, for, for a kid to be active and learning, they have to be, you know, healthy. They, they have to have, you know, um, uh, we, we have, what is it, one in four um, children in the Inland Empire um, uh, live in poverty. Wow. And, and so, you know, it, it's a real challenge for kids um, to show up um, with, um, you know, it, healthy or um, uh, not uh, feeling starved, mm -hmm. and um, then that affects their learning. So if we put healthy foods and vegetables, if we have strong breakfast programs in, in the morning so that as soon as kids show up um, at school, they get a good healthy breakfast, they start into their learning class, they eat a, a good second meal. Mm -hmm. And the other things we've learned, and we found this through a lot of recycling programs through schools, is that it's actually many times our kids teach our parents. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. when they take those healthy food, uh, those vegetables and, and those meals home from them, and they start talking to their parents about how great they're eating and what they would like and test, they're pushing mom to, to, oh, buy that apple at the store instead of buy that candy bar. Right. And, and that's an exciting transition. And you really have to capture kids early um, to, to get, you know, to, to, to really make long term changes and differences um, in, in how we um, change our, uh, our culture. I love it. And so that's the value of things like farm to school, you know, or or uh, community gardens within schools. And I know here in Riverside, I think it's Citrus, Citrus High School has a, has a community garden um, uh, up locally here. I know that Norte Vista, I mean, there's schools all over that either are, you know, basically giving students the opportunity to see where their food comes from. There are a lot of elementary school right. kids, you know, Emerson Elementary, I think I was just talking to someone from UC Riverside, Fortino was just telling me about, you know, Emerson's garden where a lot of these kids they don't have access to a you know their own home garden so they are able to um see these things and see them growing and it, it's going to give them more of a proclivity to be able to to want to try some of those vegetables because they saw it grow and uh, that's right and once they're learning how to grow early um at school they can take um t take what they learn home and maybe put a small garden in their backyard or mm -hmm. or you know someplace else in, uh, near their community, they, they, they start participating in, in that. Yep. And again, those are the, those are the seeds we plant, not only in the food system, but in our education and our community building. Exactly. So that it sounds like the benefits are so multifaceted, you know, they're just um, multifaceted. There's, there's benefits, you know, um, economically, there's a, a benefits, you know, nutritionally, obviously, but there are also ones that are going to have long-term effects on, on our students. So I just, I love the way that all of these pieces mm -hmm. work together to help make wherever it is we live a better place to live, work, and play and to raise kids, you know. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead, my throat, and I apologize because I've been fighting off a cold and gave a presentation yesterday yeah. and was almost a frog. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Yeah, and I want to. Uh, I just want to say again, thank you, Don, for for um, attending the RFSA advisory mm -hmm. um, staff. We had a number of staff members out um, w with the same kind of uh, creepy crud that, that's been floating around. But um, the format that you're bringing um, to uh, 
the RFSA and the food movement here locally to help express these ideas, get um, the word out about Riverside and um, uh, our opportunities for, um, for farming and economic development. Riverside sits within the Southern California Association of Governments, which includes the county of Ventura County, Los Angeles County, Orange County, San Bernardino County, and wow. Imperial um, County. And uh, SCAG, Southern California Association of Governments, um, is very much focused on a lot of transportation oh. issues, but they're also focused about um, a number of poverty issues. So we get back to some of these food, water, uh, water energy. We, we talk about the, the, the social uh, uh, challenges in, in our communities, but the gem that we have here in Riverside in, in, um, is our access to um, good water. Uh, we, we, uh, we have access to, really, we're not pulling water from uh, the Colorado River Project or the State Water Project from Northern California. Um, we're, we actually um, draw our water from the San Bernardino Mountains as it flows into the Santa Ana River. And being on the upper watershed of that, that, that water and that, um, uh, that access has also produced good, healthy soils in this region. And, and so we have some of the best um, growing areas in Southern California for farming. And um, we, so that gives us the opportunity for economic development where traditionally we've kind of looked at land as kind of quote cheap mm. dirt where it's a lot cheaper to buy a house here in Riverside than it is um, in Orange County or um, uh, West LA. Um, but we're starting to recognize that we have more than just cheap dirt. We have very valuable soil and we have an opportunity to really um, uh, start to build an economic um, industry of the local food movement with access to 22 million people right here in Southern California with a variety of diets. We, we have the most diverse um, uh, uh, communities, um, ethnicity and, and what have you. And the beauty about that diversity is we all, you know, if everybody brought um, a, a, a plate to some type of, um, uh, of special dinner, um, you would see just an incredible amount of uh, difference in flavors and, and, and taste that we could all uh, share from. Well, that also creates the opportunity for our farmers to grow so many mixtures and, and differences of food um, into our communities that actually can generate more value than just buying a head of lettuce at the local store that's been shipped in from um, a truck down in um, uh, Central uh, um, America. So um, uh, it, it's, um, uh, it, it's a very transformative process. We're in a great area um, of Southern California um, to be a big part of that transformation for, for a local sustainable economy. It's a part of this, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and unless we have any questions from folks that are watching, or if you're catching us on the replay, I know you can't see the comments, but if someone wants more information, Seth, about Riverside Food System Alliance or what it is we're doing here, where would we send people to? Well, we have our um, uh, Facebook page, which is um, the Riverside Food Systems Alliance. We also have um, our website, the Riverside Food, Riverside Food Systems Alliance dot com. Um, we have an upcoming conference, um, which is Grow Riverside twenty sixteen dot com, and um, w within those, we, we will have access to links um, and, and more information. Um, we, we'd love. We're, we're just starting to build our mailing list. And so we, we'd love to, um, uh, and our website, uh, which will have more information as we, um, as we grow. So um, 
those would be some places to, to start. Get on our mailing list, distribution list, and we can um, uh, start to, um, uh, uh, to, to expand out um, information about the local nice. pieces. Nice. I will go well. ahead and drop a link into there as well. Um, let me just get back into our thing, and I will. Here we go. There's a link right there. So I've just dropped in the links of everything that Seth just talked about. Our Food Systems Alliance webpage, which is in process, not all the way up yet, but our Food Systems Alliance Facebook page definitely has been up. And you can also find it on Eventbrite, but I've just dropped in the link for the Grow Riverside Conference, which is cultivating, see that right there, baby? Cultivating our future. And that is in coming up on March 21st and 22nd here in Riverside, California. It's reasonably priced, but honestly, it is one of the best places to connect with the resources of, of uh, folks that are trying to make that difference in the community. And um, I've attended, this will be my third one, and it's a great, great group. A lot of learning that can go on. So, so Seth, thank, thank you yes. so much for joining. I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording. So thank you everyone for joining us for a food system pioneer uh, uh, through an audible today. We were supposed to have Robin, but we are gonna get Robin on, but thank you so much, Seth. We will get her back, we'll get her Seth. Back. Thank you so much, because I think sure. it's, really important that people understand what is RFSA and who are and why would it even have relevance to us. And I think that you did a great job of explaining some of that. So thank you. Thank you, Doug. Uh, thank you.